Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for taking the trouble to come out and listen to me this evening. Uh, I will tell you just a little bit about myself before I start, and I will start with an apology for the scientists here, because there may be trouble translating my English uh, into, into uh, your languages. There's more than one country here. Uh, I'm not going to talk science this evening. I'm going to keep everything very, very simple. Uh, I trained in the 1960s with microwave warfare with the military. I am very well acquainted with the effects of microwaves, which is, of course, what all of the transmitters, Wi-Fi, iPods, iPads, what they all use, microwaves. <coughs> I trained with the military because at that time, microwaves during the Cold War were used as stealth weapons, as they still are today. And uh, because of their use of stealth weapons, which I understood, uh, that alerted me when this industry started to come out with cell phones and especially Wi-Fi for children, because I'm fully aware of the damage that it can cause to young girls and ladies. <clears throat> uh, when I left the military, a small part of my employment for the government was to question uh, captured spies during the Cold War, sp particularly spies which had specialist information on microwave warfare. I didn't solely talk to spies, I, I talked to terrorist groups, uh, international criminals, and surprisingly, my, I was thinking about this coming over on the aeroplane, my main job was to actually interrogate and find out about corruption at high level in the English police and at high level in the English government. <clears throat> and if you look at any of the English papers today, the two organizations being questioned are the police and the government. Nothing has changed over 45 years. Uh, following that, uh, when I left, I went to teach advanced physics, which I did up to a few years ago. I obviously teach mathematics. Uh, I have also a teaching diploma in human physiology and uh, I also teach chemistry. I have two university degrees, a diploma. I was commissioned uh, 11 years ago by a police union to write the safety report in the Tetra Airwave communication system. Uh, three years ago, a different police union asked me to write an update to that report, uh, both of which I condemned the system as particularly dangerous. I am a scientific advisor to a few organizations, both international and UK-based. <coughs> And finally, I work for free. I've never charged a penny uh, for anything I do. For two reasons. One, I can represent the poor, and they don't have to worry about me. And secondly, nobody can tell me what to do, and nobody can tell me what to say, or more importantly, what not to say. Uh, with me, it is the truth, uh, and in some countries, the truth comes as quite a surprise. <clears throat> now, I'm going to begin with, first of all, I'm talking about microwaves. Microwaves react with water, which is how microwave ovens work. 
And is there proof? Am I just going to stand here talking about endless science uh, and meaningless things? Is there proof? Which is what everybody wants to know. And it is a very simple answer. The answer is yes. In fact, there is quite a lot of it. In fact, there is an enormous amount of it. And the proof really came out <coughs> with a document I have here. And this particular document was the most top secret document at its time. Realizing that microwaves caused a lot of damage to water-based bodies, <coughs> the United States Defense Intelligence Agency published this document which was circulated to all governments, all Western governments. <coughs> and I think this piece of paper, this one piece of paper here with the one sentence is going to cause more death, more suffering, and more pain than the entire Second World War. Just this one piece of paper. And it says to all of the governments, <clears throat> if the advanced nations of the West are strict in the enforcement of stringent exposure standards, there could be unfavorable and really, the whole argument begins and ends here. That is all the proof you need. And what the governments did, and it is still in force today, they said, well, what we will look at for our safety standard, we will not take the level at which microwaves interact with the cellular processes in the body. <clears throat> and for an adult, there are around 4,500 different biological processes that can be affected. It's 4,050 in a child. Uh, they said, we won't look at that level. We will choose a level up here that gives us total freedom. And it is the one used today for all of the cell phones, uh, even the Tetra Airwave system. And it is six minutes of warming. That's it. The total safety level is six minutes of heating. In other words, if you don't feel too warm in six minutes, then it's okay. And that's it. And this is why we have all of this trouble. And it is why country after country are now finding they have leukemia clusters, cancer clusters, all sorts of problems going on that I will discuss over this and the following lecture after the break. Uh, but it's this one piece of paper that triggered everything off. <clears throat> the program, after this was put out, it is called, by governments, it is called Active Denial. Uh, in other words, they deny everything. Now, leading up to this, and this takes some believing to, to reach this stage, there were lots of experiments on lots of people without their knowledge. Five, in, in just 40 years, and this is documented, in 40 years, 500,000 people were tested without their knowledge, some, many, to the point of death. They chose military personnel because military personnel are fit, they're active, and they make good case studies. They chose students, psychiatric patients, the poor, children over the age of four, pregnant women, Muslims and Catholics. I won't go into why those groups were chosen uh, at this point, but um, 
they were on the list, and of course, anybody else that they decided to, to experiment on. <coughs> in 1986, at a top secret conference, a US weapons center, a gentleman made a speech, and he said, concerning the microwaves, he said, we can change the behavior of cells, tissue, whole, or whole organisms, have a six times higher fetus mortality, cause birth defects, and induce cancer in human cells. That is the result of their research. Again, in a top secret course between uh, 2001 and 2007, course number 11, students, these would be scientists, will be familiar with current knowledge. That is, cancer, memory, brain function, damage to the eye, skin, and birth defects can be caused by this radiation. And that is borne out in this document, the one I said is most dangerous, because apart from the top line here, all of the rest of this are illnesses which you can expect to get if you are exposed to radiation. And it says here, exposed to microwave radiation below thermal effects. In other words, below the safety level. And then they, they list all of the uh, psychiatric problems and all of the physical problems. Some of them they describe as severe neuropathical, neuropathological symptoms. So that is why we are in this mess. <coughs> a few more bits of paper here. Uh, this is a top secret document, or it was till I got hold of it. Uh, Biological effects on health hazards, microwave irradiation. And again, they say here, uh, they specifically say here, um, sorry, they specifically say here, this is, are you, are you, I'm, I'm getting into trouble here, aren't I? Uh, they, they specifically say here, this is radio frequency microwave irradiation. And they have, this particular document was 350 pages. Similarly, the Naval Medical Research Institute, a very highly regarded research laboratory service, again United States, they talk about uh, altered menstrual activity for ladies and uh, a lot of fetal development problems. And they say here, it is attributed to microwave and radio frequency radiation. <clears throat> there were several top secret studies. I mean, I've made a list here just flying out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, and some of them used hundreds and thousands of people. Uh, and this one here is the National Security Advisors. And with one of them, they were taken to court. The government were taken to court. And this was MK Ultra, the top secret Usually, the microwave ones begin with the letters MK. And it says, although the shocking details of medical ethics abuses by the US and Canadian governments were amply detailed, <coughs> Washington and Canada, citing national security and government privilege, stalled for so long that cases never came to trial. The surviving victims settled for a pittance out of court. In fact, it took 50 years to get that to court. And 50 years is about the standard time that governments try to stall you for. 
An experiment I know of that was carried out in England, the survivors only reached court a few years ago, that was 50 years on, and only last week, uh, on our news, thalidomide, which again was an experiment for pregnant ladies, uh, only last week, the government scientists and the industry apologized, 50 years on. The question that people come up with is, is there any legal proof? We have scientific proof, and that can't be argued against. <clears throat> I will face any scientist and say, if you think this is safe, explain this. And I was involved in this. And I will say in my defense that whilst I was questioning spies, <clears throat> and other people, I never once used a single second of pain, embarrassment, humiliation, uh, hypnotism, drugs, nothing at all. I spoke to the ladies and gentlemen exactly as I would talk to you if we were sitting outside having coffee. The proof <clears throat> Well, to my knowledge, there are 8,300 incriminating documents from the military explaining how microwaves cause illness. There are five high court cases, to my knowledge, in various countries, proving that the cell towers and the cell phones cause cancer, neurological damage and physical damage. Five high court cases that have been made against the industry. There are 12, 14 epidemiological studies. In other words, a study on thousands of people <coughs> over 10 years each. There are 14 of them, to my knowledge. And there are uh, 19, 23 now legal judgments which are not high court, where a magistrate or a mayor or somebody has intervened and ordered a transmitter to be turned off or taken down or moved. <laughs> so there is plenty of legal proof. And I have some of the court numbers and some of the court details with me. <clears throat> the Council of Europe, Parliament, Parliamentary Assembly, Council of Europe. On page three, <clears throat> because of all of the knowledge which has been gained and denied by the industry and some governments, Section 8.32 is very specific. Ban all mobile phones, decked phones, Wi-Fi systems from classrooms and schools. It couldn't be more clear. And further on, on page six, they discuss the danger to the plants, insects, and animals, which I will be discussing after the break, and they specifically target here the Tetra airwave frequency. <clears throat> you will find that insurance companies are now not covering illnesses from transmitters or cell phones or Wi-Fi. <clears throat> now, many people, when they buy the, all of these gadgets for their children, they don't actually look at the small print at the back. Uh, I do. <clears throat> and for instance, 
the Apple, the iPhone, it says it should be kept at least 15 millimeters away from the body. Now, that's because it isn't safe. There is no other reason why you should keep it 15 millimeters from your body. But what happens if you're holding it? Because you're touching it. And it isn't just the microwaves leaving it coming through you. They will go into your arm and they go into your body and they travel through your body and they are grounded like an electric current because it is an electric current. And this is why, as I will come to, <coughs> pregnant women uh, are advised never to come into contact with microwaves. So they say 15 millimeters from the body. It says here in uh, another guidebook, <coughs> a few animal studies, however, have suggested that low level of microwave radiation uh, can cause the development of cancer in laboratory animals. So if you take them to court, you don't have a leg to stand on because they will say, look at the small print, we've said it can cause cancer, and you chose to use it. Similarly, uh, another one here, it says, now customers, when they buy these new gadgets, you agree not to sue the cell phone manufacturer for any bodily damages or harm, or take part in any class action lawsuit. <coughs> That's an industry protecting itself. <coughs> now, this is a, a document here, which they, the industry do not want you to know about. In America, in New York, you have to notify a body. If you are an industry, you must notify this body so that the shareholders can read about any lawsuits facing your industry. Because if you go to court and the industry is found guilty, you lose your shares. So in New York, the industry has to notify if there are any legal claims against it. And there are pages here, double-sided, of mobile manufacturers who are facing class actions. It's tucked away in the back. It took an awful lot of finding, uh, but it's there. And a class action is when lots of people band together, usually with one lawyer, because they're all fighting the same case. And there are pages here of class actions. <coughs> An Australian gentleman, I wrote this paper uh, because I probably receive a phone call every day at home from somebody who is being targeted by the industry because they have to carry on with their experiments or the government. And I wrote this, this particular paper just to try and help them. And an Australian gentleman here, a doctor, um, who actually worked for the World Health Organization saying that there was absolutely nothing wrong. He now represents the communication industry as a consultant. Uh, and he said here, he wrote here, all aspects of human behavior can be affected, even controlled. Those are his words. <coughs> now, if anyone is thinking of any form of legal action against being targeted, or there is a EU parliamentary convention here, uh, January, what was the year? 1999, <clears throat> and I have the number. Um, but 
it is a call to ban all human experimentation or manipulation. And the European Parliament have a number that you can use. Similarly, there is the Nuremberg Treaty, and I am trying to invoke this uh, with the Tetra Airwave system because the police do not know that they are actually a part of an epidemiological study or the ambulance service or fire brigade where the government themselves say we cannot rule out severe neurological damage and cancer. And it is a study which in fact is going on until 2018. <clears throat> this is the Nuremberg Treaty that was signed at the end of the war. And it specifically says, and the Western governments, we all signed it, the voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential. If you are being targeted or you are being experimented upon, they require your consent and there are no exceptions. Similarly, with the police or the emergency services or the secret services or the military, again, if you are a part of an ongoing experiment, it requires your consent. And it doesn't mean at the meeting where I was uh, several years ago in England, where the government doctor spoke to the police unions and she said, use it or resign. Those were her words. Use it or resign. And if they chose to keep their jobs, as many people would, because they have families and they have commitments, then to me, and I'm sure legally, that doesn't constitute a full understanding of the risks and consent. So if all this is known, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I do need to drink. Um, <laughs> If I spilt that on that, I'd electrocute myself, wouldn't I? Um, if all this is known, why aren't the government doing anything? <clears throat> if they know how dangerous it is, they know the effects, why are they not doing something about it? Well, the first answer, of course, is the most simple one, which is money lots of it, for specific people. Not for your country, but for specific people. <clears throat> Secondly, every single person with a cell phone can be tracked. And it may amaze you to know what they know about you. Even if your cell phone is off, and this is Scientific American. Even if your cell phone is off, totally off, it can still be tracked. Everywhere you go can be tracked. If you have one of those camera things, they can see through it. It can be activated. They can hear everything you're saying even if it's off. And when I say this to financial people, bankers or lawyers or doctors, and I say, if you're sitting in your surgery and your cell phone is down there and it's turned off, somebody can still be listening to every single personal item of your conversation without your knowledge. And it's not just your government I'm sorry. Can I do the questions afterwards, please? Uh, because of, um, I'll, I'll break my concentration. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> it, it, there are lots of phones. Some can be activated and some cannot. Some can be activated by up to 40 
different countries. That surprises people. And I'm not going into the electronics of why that can happen, but up to 40 different countries. Now, you may be thinking, well, okay, mine is, or my cell phone is encrypted or whatever, and all of this I have documentary evidence for. Uh, this is from Cambridge University very recently in a scientific journal. Um, it is actually possible, they say, to reprogram the contents of supposedly secure memory and obtain information. <laughs> they can actually reprogram your phone. I know how it's done, but I don't have time to go into it now. <clears throat> but up to 40 countries. And you might think, well, why? What's the point? <clears throat> I, you may be thinking, I'm not important. Why would somebody want to find out about me? Well, we're coming back. One reason, not every reason, but one reason could be blackmail. One reason could be that uh, I know quite a lot about the spying world because I, I spent 11 years questioning some spies, which was, as I say, a very small part of my work. Um, you may think I only sweep floors and I wash dishes and I'm, I wouldn't be important enough for a spy to want to investigate me. In fact, you are the very person that they are looking for. The very person they are looking for. Why? Uh, I don't have time to go into, but I can assure you, you are valuable. <clears throat> so it may be for future. It, they may not be doing it, but all I'm saying is there is a possibility of up to 40 countries that have access to your cell phone. And of course, everything that goes over your computer can also be monitored. Uh, that goes without saying. The governments, <coughs> this is very recently published, just July, 28th of July. Not only if they wish, and in this country, you, nobody may be listening to anything you say. All I'm saying is there is a possibility. But there is now a detector, and it is in use, and it can detect, because of the immense computer powers that we have now, it can detect hormone levels in bodies, the molecular structure of the hormone levels in bodies, so it knows what your body is doing. And it can also look at your brain patterns. And because microwaves will go into the body, it will look at your brain pattern. And it can tell which parts of your brains are now active. And if they know which parts of your brains are active, of course, they can judge roughly what your mood is and probably, in some cases, what you're thinking. <clears throat> and this machine is now working today. So not only can they know where you are, what you're doing, what you're saying, but they can look inside your body as well, and that's pretty scary. So all of this is available to the secret services and the governments if they want to investigate people. <clears throat> Another reason is that microwaves can be used uh, as stealth weapons, which I'm perfectly familiar with. <coughs> but they can also be used to change the environment. Many people don't know that in some storm clouds, high activity, the high electrical activity, actually produces gamma rays, radioactive rays. Now, this is pretty scary stuff. <coughs> uh, if you drop a substance, a soft, shiny metal like barium 
or aluminium into the clouds, the clouds will become radioactive. And the clouds are also charged. And if you beam microwaves at the clouds, it is possible to physically change the weather. And if you can change the weather, uh, only slightly, you can either cause another country economic disaster if it's too dry or economic disaster if it is too wet. And this technology is available. Which is another reason why the government will not interfere with the microwave industry. <coughs> In the UK, which I consider to be, and I'm ashamed to say, probably if you were to list the five most corrupt countries in the world, I'm talking purely about England, not Wales, not Scotland, not Ireland, just England, I would think England will be among the five most top corrupt countries in the world. <coughs> um, and this is what they have just published for the communications industry, the government. They said they can put anything anywhere. No limits. Anything, anywhere. Schools, hospitals, nurseries, anything, anywhere. And finally, <coughs> I, well, finally on this bit, I wrote the, in 2009, I wrote an updated report. This is a most confidential report on the Tetra Airwave Communication System for the Public and Commercial Services Union, 2009, uh, which I condemn they will have about 90 days to live. 7,630. <clears throat> the then, when before I wrote this, uh, Sir William Stewart, chief government scientist, he actually found that the tetra frequency released calcium ions from brain tissue. In other words, it can cause severe neurological disorder and cause cancer. The top most reputable journal, Police Review, Jane's, did a three-page article on this. <coughs> so it's not me standing here just making this up, and they won't print a word unless they check it and double-check it, and they did a three-page article and finally in this section, or nearly finally, yeah, finally in this section, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be very careful what I say here because this is a high court legal case and it is still rolling on about Tetra. I was asked to send legal people scientific evidence to do with Tetra. <clears throat> And this is the letter I wrote to a high court judge <coughs> where when officers are on duty, <coughs> I will make, I make two statements when I talk like this. The first is, I will guarantee that you will not find a police station with a substantial amount of officers that have had Tetra for 18 months or more, you will find increased cancers, the police, their behavior will have deteriorated, there will be more car accidents in, by police in police cars. They all go up. In every single country I've been in, it is what they say. And police aggression goes up. 
and ones, and this is in my evidence to the judge, and if there are police officers here that would like a copy of this, I've made arrangements with the doctor <coughs> organizing this talk. I can't just photocopy it for everybody. Um, <coughs> the problems are you have police officers enclosed in metal police vans, usually for some time, while they're transmitting. They are close to other officers transmitting. They tend to wear metal-based helmets in riot situations, which, of course, bounces the, reflects the microwaves. And they tend to use the system for more than six minutes. And all of this is provable. It's not a theory, it is provable. And if any police officer wants proof that the system is dangerous to go to court, I can do it inside an hour. I can tell you what to do inside an hour. It is provable. With one of our government experiments, they wrote at the back, in every group, these are police, some participants were significantly affected. They didn't say what some was, but if we take some as a certain number and you multiply that over 100,000 officers, it's going to be considerable. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I'm going to cover one more section and then we, we'll stop for a break. We're okay on time here. I had a phone call from a lady a few years ago and she spoke for about an hour and a quarter. I just answered the phone. She said, Mr. Trower, yes. And she spoke for an hour and a quarter. Uh, you, you're going to have to forgive me. I have a little bit of trouble talking about this. I'll get through it. Um, this is her phone number. This is her phone number. She said, my daughter has just had her 12th birthday. I am holding her hand. She is dead. She was number 12 to die since the transmitter went up in the playground. And she spoke for two and a quarter hours. There was nothing I could do or say. Now, you may think that one person phoning up doesn't mean that the industry is to blame. Uh, and that is true enough. But when we looked into this, it was one school with another 200 that had cancer clusters with transmitters in the playgrounds. 200. Now, why children are specifically at risk, and I'm going to deal, please forgive me, for that, I'm going to deal at length with Wi-Fi. This is my main concern. There are five reasons why children are most at risk. <clears throat> First of all, I'll just have a drink of you, forgive me. I'm doing well today. Some, sometimes I can't get through that bit. Uh, there is no known safety level of microwave irradiation anywhere in the world published for a child. And whenever I go to a country, I make a challenge, and I'm making it here. I will face any government scientist, any industry scientist, live on television, and I will say to them, what is the safe level of microwave irradiation for a child? 
And when I speak in schools and to governments and royalty and other people I talk to, I say, what is the safe level? Because if you can't tell me, why are you putting Wi-Fi in schools? A single day of a child in front of Wi-Fi in a school is a day too long. And I will come to why in a second. Now, with children, there is no known safe level anywhere published in the world. <clears throat> Would you give a drug to a child if there was no known safe level? Would you guess? No. Of course you wouldn't. In children, the blood-brain barrier, which is a barrier around the brain, it also is also around the thorax, the chest, and it also covers a part of the gut. <clears throat> it's like a, a fishing net. And in children, it takes 18 months to develop from birth. It is published and it is known that microwaves destroy the blood-brain barrier. Now, what that means is that as the child is in the womb and as the child is growing up, toxins from inside the body can go into the brain and cause damage. And essential chemicals inside the brain can come out and deprive the brain of what it needs. Now, uh, Dr. Christine Ackerman, I believe, think she's German, she will forgive me if she isn't, and another doctor have written on this extensively, and they have both said this can lead to autism and other neurological illnesses in children. <clears throat> the nervous system inside a child, uh, the electrical cables, if you like, they have 122 layers to protect them from neurological damage. And they take 22 years to complete. A child doesn't have the full system until the child is 22 years old. They are laid down by a system known as protein synthesis. And protein synthesis is destroyed by microwave irradiation. You are risking neural degenerative damage with your children with Wi-Fi in a classroom. And I can assure you, as true as I stand here, the levels of radiation in a classroom exceed those that are used in the Cold War to make people sick. <clears throat> and if you add up the radiation a child is exposed to in a class of 20 or 30 transmitters with one on the wall, with one in the playground taking all of the calls from all the other classrooms and spreading around the school. Um, when you add that up, it's pretty frightening. <clears throat> the immune system of a child <clears throat> takes 18 years to complete. And at the beginning, that document from the American government, everything it comes up with is suppression of the immune system. So you are destroying a child's immune system again before it's up and running. <clears throat> and of course, I have documentary evidence for all this. Uh, and finally, the bones. The bones in a child are not fully developed until the child is 28. Now, if a child goes to school at five and stays there at university until 24 and they use Wi-Fi, that's a lot of bone damage. And there are papers to show that both the marrow in the bones, which is, of course, moist, <coughs> uh, which makes the immune system, and the bone density... Uh, they can be affected, uh, but it takes 28 years. And if anybody's wondering what the last bone is to form, it's the clavicle. The clavicle here. <coughs> and this is the paper here. I carry all of my evidence with me. Here it is, protein synthesis uh, by the 
University of Dundee, Scottish University, very clever people, uh, protein synthesis. <coughs> now the reason there is no safe level for a child is that, and this appeared in a scientific journal, August 2012, they have just suddenly realized what we have been saying all along, <coughs> children are not small adults. You don't look at an adult dose and scale it down for a child. That is wrong. They are immensely complex beings, immensely complex. And you cannot scale, this is to do for the drugs industry, uh, this is a warning for the drugs industry that where they're putting adult dose, child dose, the child dose is wrong. It is a guess. But for microwave, there is no child safe level anyway. And children absorb, as it happens, more radiation than adults because they're smaller. And the smaller you are, you, the more you are to the size of the aerial and the more you will resonate with the microwaves. <coughs> if there is any doubt, there are 17 pages here of university published papers explaining how fertility and reproductive organs in ladies are damaged by microwaves. 17 pages of just university experiments. So there can be no doubt. <clears throat> and I can never believe for the life of me why people put Wi-Fi in schools. I can never understand it. Well, I can understand it. Usually, uh, they give them some sort of gift, like a free phone or a free iPad or iPod. They, because it's cheaper <coughs> to do that, than it is use fiber optic cable and telephone cables. It's cheaper. Uh, so they do that. <coughs> this is, uh, I, I've been through this. Again, the small print, the small print in the mobile phone book at the back. Uh, I've read a few of them, but it particularly warns here. Uh, I'm not sure how you measure this, but it says, uh, 9.8 inches, keep it 9.8 inches from your body, especially pregnant women and the lower abdomen of teenagers. How you would measure that, I, I don't know. I, I summed up, I summed up uh, quite a few hundred research papers, uh, and I'm going to leave the doctor with a copy of this. Uh, if anybody wants it. If you do, I suggest you photocopy it in color because it highlights different areas. <coughs> uh, I summed up all of the problem with children and Wi-Fi in schools. Uh, and I broke it into what I call a cartoon. Uh, and in fact, it's actually having quite an impact around the world. It is on the internet, but, but I will leave a, a copy here. But basically, <coughs> I'll just have a little sip. Basically, <coughs> if you can follow my train of thought here, please, ladies. I'd like you to imagine <coughs> you are 15 years old and you are in school. Or you are a teacher in school, a lady teacher in school. <coughs> a young lady teacher. You have around 400,000 eggs or, 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 or follicles in your ovaries which, which can develop into eggs, around 400,000. <coughs> now, they are being irradiated from your Wi-Fi. And what a lot of scientists fail to read is that this particular DNA inside the follicles or the eggs suffers 10 times more damage from radiation 
than any other DNA in the body. So even if the children had a safety level, it would be a factor of 10 out anyway. <clears throat> they suffer 10 times more. And this particular DNA, the mitochondrial DNA, is irreparable. If a child goes into school tomorrow and that particular part of the DNA is damaged, then what I'm going to say now is quite shocking. <clears throat> you are a, a schoolgirl or a teacher, your DNA is being irradiated with microwaves, <clears throat> and, and that is published. So you could have damaged DNA. <clears throat> if you have a child, that child can be born or could be born with a genetic abnormality. But because it is irreparable, that child's child will also carry that same genetic disorder. And her child will carry the same disorder and so on until there are no more females in that line. The schoolgirl today or the teacher today is not harming herself, she is harming her generations. And that is published. <clears throat> but it gets worse. And this is why I fight to try and get this stopped in countries. And in some, I am successful. It gets worse. And if you want me to talk to your schools, I'll come back. I work for free, I'll come back. Imagine now you are... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Imagine you are the schoolgirl who is now 18, and I've taught 18-year-olds, advanced physics, or you are the teacher, <clears throat> and imagine you are pregnant. And if you only get to ask one question of a scientist, this is the one to ask. You are now 18, or the teacher, and you are pregnant. And you are within the first 100 days of your pregnancy. You may not at the beginning even know that you are pregnant. But in the first 100 days, the ovarian follicles in your baby, the ovarian follicles are forming. It is 100 days, then 120, I think, then another 100 and something. But the first 100 days, they are forming. The 400,000 follicles are forming. They have absolutely no protection against microwaves. None. Not a single bit. The areas in the cells for the scientists, the protein 53, the nuclear core complex that fights against radiation, they are non-existent. <clears throat> And my question for any scientist is what is the safe level of microwave irradiation for the first 100 days of an embryo? And if you can tell me, I will be very, very happy because I can retire and go home and look after my wife and walk my dog. But there isn't one. So, in fact, the schoolgirl today whose ovaries are already being irradiated, <clears throat> she has a risk. But when she becomes pregnant, there is her risk on the child already, plus the risk of the ovarian follicles having further damage. So the main damage is going to come out in the grandchild. And that is already established, because there are mammalian species that do not take 18, 20 years to have children. And that is already known. So my message today is please rethink your Wi-Fi. Because we can avoid all of this. We can avoid the whole lot 
there is a simple solution to this and most other problems. All you want is a piece of wire about that long. That's it, a piece of wire about that long. Either fiber optic cable or telephone cable, doesn't matter. They both work, a piece of wire that long, and you save the risk to the generations. Now, if you're going to ask me how many children, I can't give you a maximum. Uh, because there are lots of other factors. I can give you a minimum, but it is quite frightening. The mobile industry themselves have covered their backs. This is a document published by the Mobile Manufacturers Forum, the industry. And <clears throat> They have listed problems from scientific research to do with, and I'll, I'll stick on the topic, embryos, testes in boys, fetus in girls, sperm in boys. They have listed problems in Belgium, China, Egypt, France, Italy, Malaysia, Nigeria, Pakistan, Poland, Slovak Republic, Switzerland, Turkey, Ukraine, Venezuela. So it's pretty well wide, widespread. Now, even if you, you're sitting there thinking, this bloke's totally mad, he should be locked up, and he's making all this up, okay, I'll go along with that. Um, there, are, there is one organization <coughs> that isn't mad, and I have the utmost respect for, for the people who represent it, again, free of charge, and the work they do, and it is UNICEF, the children's charity UNICEF. They decided, because they protect children all over the world, they decided to investigate, and they wrote a paper, electromagnetic fields from phones, health effects on children and teenagers. They looked into it themselves, and they published their paper. And they found an 85% increase in central nervous system disorders, which is what I said about the electrical pathways. A 36% in epilepsy, uh, which for the scientists, if you want to know how it causes epilepsy, I, I can tell you the part of the brain. A word I'm not, I don't particularly like here, I, I would prefer to say a, a psychiatric, psychiatric disorder, but they've actually described it as mental retardation, an increase of 11%. <coughs> Blood and immune disorders, which will obviously come from the bone marrow, 82% with a risk to the fetus. And they published it. Uh, and I think... You know, you, you, you can't argue with that. Now, just a few bits of paper more here. <clears throat> We're doing okay for time. Um, published in our Sunday papers, <clears throat> do not expose yourself to microwaves if you are pregnant. The reason is, <clears throat> as I said, the microwaves go, th go into your body and they go through. I'm not going to describe the path they go through. It's too complex. But they go through your body. They carry a small electric current. <clears throat> now, I want to just talk about the fetus for two seconds, just to give you an idea. Um, if, we <clears throat> if you think of the brain of a fetus, inside the uterus of a, of a pregnant lady. I'm just going to talk about the electrical connections there for two seconds to give you an idea of, of what, where I'm coming from. <clears throat> Imagine that you go home tonight and you pick up your telephone book and you dial every single person in that book by pushing a button all at once. Now imagine you have a telephone book 
for every single person in the world, in every country. And you push a button and you can dial every single person in the world in one go. That is the number of connections being made a second in the brain of a child in a uterus, every second. And they are minuscule, minuscule electrical charges that are involved in all the intricate work, minuscule. And if you're going to put through <coughs> a massive great electric current, it's not going to do the baby any good. And there are papers published that say it can interfere with the development of the brain later on in life. <coughs> I've covered that, and I've covered that, <coughs> and I've covered that. <coughs> I said that earlier, around 200 schools internationally, a, a study was covered, a study was done in 2003 and 2005, and they found... 200, around 200 schools with leukemia or cancer clusters where they had transmitters in the playground. They found miscarriages, mostly from lady teachers. Uh, in fact, the miscarry rates, I know this from the Cold War because pregnant women were deliberately exposed to microwaves and they found a 57.7% of the women had miscarriages. <coughs> and that was written up by the World Health Organization. Uh, <coughs> miscarriages, brain cancers, other cancers, breast cancers. Uh, <coughs> this, this particular one here, and just w one of the citations here, it said... <coughs> The telecom giant Orange has suspended operation at a school phone mask site in Paris after eight cases of cancer were confirmed among children in the district. That, that's just one of the, in this particular one, 138. And there are around 60 here. <coughs> and it's not just confined to European countries and here, <clears throat> in the UK, <clears throat> they found a cancer cluster. This was brought up in Parliament, the English Parliament. A cancer cluster of children around a tetramast. And here, this is the MP speaking, they found 11 children under 11 with leukemia and seven adults with cancer around a transmitter. <clears throat> the minister stood up and said, we are within international guidelines. In other words, the thermal level, and sat down. And that was it. Case closed. It took about two years to get that into Parliament. <clears throat> and the minister just blew it away with, with one breath. <clears throat> and if you think, <clears throat> that was 2003, 2005, if you think they've stopped, this is 2012. Cancer cluster around school mast. This is Kansas. They're still going on. In fact, they're becoming commonplace, and people have stopped actually just publishing them, which is just amazing for me. <coughs> this is a study carried out by the industry on its own microwaves, and they have said it can cause uh, neurological damage in children, carried out by the industry itself on its own product. <coughs> okay. Now, one of the saddest areas of this, <coughs> I gave a talk 
I, I, I gave a talk in Wales uh, several years ago. I was asked to go and talk to the council. Am, am I still sounding all right? I was asked... Oh, my earrings are falling off. There we are. Um, I, was asked, I was asked to go and give a talk to the council on putting up transmitters in Wales. And I drove into Wales and I looked at all the mountains. <coughs> And I said to the council, and I hate being right, I said to the council, whatever you do, do not put up transmitters in this area. There are too many hills. The microwaves will reflect, and it will have a devastating effect on the children. <clears throat> and one of the most common effects on children is depression and suicidal tendencies. And... Lo and behold, I was ignored. The industry spokesperson said, I'm talking a lot of rubbish. They put the transmitters up, and they had the biggest suicide rate in Wales ever in its history. <clears throat> and it, this isn't a one-off. There are quite a lot of suicide studies, quite a lot, pages of them from microwave irradiation. One of the first symptoms for adults and children is depression, then severe depression. In fact, one of the studies here, I spoke of 14 epidemiological studies, and one of the studies here was actually carried out by the industry itself. And its conclusion was, <clears throat> if you are near a transmitter, it can cause the cancer initiators and cancer promoters in the body to become active. And by sheer coincidence, by sheer coincidence, uh, an article appeared in Scientific America on cancer, and it said, if cancer, the cancer initiators and cancer promoters are activated, they actually did a whole long line written by oncologists on how that can develop into cancer. So there is no case to be defended. Microwaves cause cancer. Not in everybody, in some people. <clears throat> and the question is usually how many people? And the answer is, well, <clears throat> I don't know. There is, when you do any study, because the industry are very quick to come back, and they will say, we have hundreds if not thousands of studies that show microwaves to be safe. And my reply is, you're supposed to. You're supposed to find some studies where things are safe. It's called, mathematically, a distribution curve. <coughs> And I will explain it just to, so people can understand. Um, if I could have a thought experiment and I could go to Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris now, which is an enormously busy place, and I could pick every single person up from child to my age in the airport, and subject them to an experiment for 10 years. <clears throat> and my experiment would, would be they had to drink two pints of beer a day and smoke 10 cigarettes. You would have a distribution curve. Some people would be ill straight away. Some people would take a little time to be ill. Some people would say, this is great, Barry. Can you double the dose? I'm really enjoying this. Um, and other people would develop symptoms five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line. <clears throat> it is a typical bell distribution curve that you will have <clears throat> if you study trees, fish, study anything, you will always get the same bell-shaped curve. This is why the industry are keen to say, we did this and there was no ill effect. <clears throat> and if we did it on people smoking, some would have no effect, and some would, and some would die, and some, you know. 
It, it's, you always have that distribution curve. <coughs> we'll be stopping in just 15 minutes. <coughs> and whilst I was in uh, Africa talking, a teacher spoke after me. And this is on the internet, I think, that I'll talk there. <coughs> and he said, Child, childhood suicide and child bad behavior is almost unknown in African children. Almost unknown. He said, we had a transmitter put in our school. Within a few years, every single child in the class, and he had a class of 30, every single child was on Ritalin. Every single one. Okay, right. <clears throat> We're going through these. We've got around 10, 15 minutes. I'm just turning over here things I've already said that other countries have confirmed. Uh, and I, I needn't go on about these. Right. <clears throat> a particularly interesting paper which has been published, the Department of Biophysics and Radiation uh, in Ankara, <clears throat> they have shown that uh, the thyroid in children, which is the master gland, is particularly sensitive to Wi-Fi, the frequency of Wi-Fi radiation, uh, 254 megahertz, 2540 megahertz. Um, it is particularly sensitive to that particular frequency <coughs> and can cause thyroid problems in children. But they've also said here that it, it can, that, that radiation anyway can damage the thyroid in children. <coughs> And it is followed up with other papers, which you'll excuse me, just turning over. Sperm count, we've done that. <coughs> and a paper I did mention, Bones, uh, a research paper from India, uh, where they say the microwaves lead to bone weakening which is the last thing you want in school children who are trying to build their bones up. Now, to give you an idea of <coughs> some of the papers, uh, I'm involved in a legal case in the United States where uh, a lovely, delightful young lady, an 11-year-old, I think she's an 11- or 12-year-old girl, doesn't want to sit in front of a Wi-Fi set <coughs> in school, and the school basically said, you're here, you will do what we say, and if you don't, take us to court. And uh, she did take them to court. Uh, she has a law firm supporting her free of charge. I am supporting her free of charge with a few other people from around the world. And to give you an idea of the scale of papers, <coughs> one of the lawyers representing the girl, and the case isn't over, one of the lawyers representing the girl has highlighted 5,000 papers to support her. 5,000. Now, that is some pool of knowledge. 5,000 papers, which has been submitted in evidence. <coughs> now, it is possible to have transmitters taken down. <coughs> and I'm going to talk about this, and then we'll probably stop for a break. <coughs> in some of the countries I've been to, they say, well, this transmitter went up, the industry spokesperson came up, and it's usually the same thing. 
they say, <clears throat> these are radio waves. We fully comply with the ICNRP certificates, the International Certificate for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. We're well within the safety limits. <clears throat> There's no worries about this, Governor. We'll put it up there, sign here, and we'll give you the money. Um, <clears throat> and the transmitter goes up, and in one particular country, within 18 months, people had to start leaving because of the cancers and the leukemias and the illnesses. <clears throat> and I was asked if I would go and represent them. It was a township in Africa. I worked for free, the barrister worked for free, uh, and we took on the industry. <clears throat> And we found, and this may be here, if you want a transmitter taken down in school, or near a school, or near your house, this worked. And it's worked, as far as I know, three times. <clears throat> the industry say we comply with the ICNRP guidelines, the International Certificate Guidelines, that is not true. It is not true if they haven't followed them. And I have been as far as Australia speaking and all the way back again, and I have yet <coughs> to find one person, not one person in the world, that has read them, especially decision makers. And my first question to the decision makers is, have you read them? No. Well, I have. And here, and this is your legal argument, if you want something taken down, because I guarantee they would not have done this and the transmitters would have been put up illegally, and I'm not a lawyer, it, this is a lawyer's argument, <coughs> But if they have lied or not told you the truth, what I'm saying is you may have a case in law to have it taken down. This <coughs> is the International Certificate. Certificate? And I have read it. <coughs> and here on page 545, <coughs> it says... For example, children, the elderly, and some chronically ill people might have a lower tolerance for one or more forms of this radiation than the rest of the population. Separate guideline levels may be necessary. So, what they should have done if they followed these, is knock on every door, found out who lives there, how sick you are, how old you are, how young you are. They should have documented everybody within the radius of the transmitter, and that should be able to be produced in court. If they haven't done it, they have not complied with the international certificate. Not complied. It gets better. I don't know, of course, trouble, I can tell you now. I'm really not liked anywhere. Um, <clears throat> it says here, and this is the main one, it says here, in practice, it says, decision makers should review current scientific literature and determine an appropriate reduction factor for known illnesses from radiation. In other words, they should show evidence of reading current scientific literature, and they should say, right, this paper says this level is dangerous, this paper says this is dangerous, we will set our safety level for the school or the hospital or the nursing home or whatever 
here. And that requires scientific evidence and explanation. And it is movable. If another paper is published, it goes down. What they normally do is there's a big scaffold thing and the transmitter goes bonk, and then a few months later, bonk, 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 some more, and then a year later, dong, 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 and before you know where you are, it looks like Jodrell Bank or a space, space, space station, you know, and there is no limit on what is coming out. <coughs> but they have not agreed, if they say to you, we have abided by the international certificate, they must be able to produce this. And if they can't, then they have not told the truth. And I don't know anything about law, but I have known three cases where transmitters have been taken down because if they went to court, they would have lost. <clears throat> this is the international certificate scientific paper and as I say one of the questions which I ask every scientist is what is the safe level for children and they actually openly admit this was published in 2009 and the International Commission say another gap in research is children. No study population to date has included children. They might be particularly susceptible to harmful effects. They are likely to accumulate many years of exposure during their lives. <coughs> Now, if that's what they're saying, there is no safe level for a child which is known. That's it. And if there is no safe level, why is Wi-Fi in schools? If there is no safe level. Now, this is a study. It is a study on children without your consent. And that's important. That is legal. They started studying children in 2009. They are looking for cancers, brain damage, illnesses. That requires your consent. And I wonder how many parents, after listening to me, for an hour would say, where's the form? I'll give my consent for Wi-Fi. But they don't. They just plonk the Wi-Fi up. They usually give them free computers or something because it's cheaper. In comes the profit. And your grandchildren are going to pay the price. I as I said when, uh, on the television, people that saw me this afternoon, I have two aims with my talk here. Sometimes I'm successful in countries and sometimes I'm not. <coughs> One of my aims is to protect the future generation of your children. With that in mind, I did ask if I could see your queen because she has power to actually make people come and listen and decide. <clears throat> if anybody knows her, I would desperately like to speak to her tomorrow before I fly back. Um, and I have a letter from a king. I have a letter from a king that I sat, and I'm not boasting here, I, I, I sat and had at lunch with. And I can give your queen, this king's personal telephone number. I can't give it to anybody else. I can give her his phone number. She can telephone him. He is further down the line than you are, and he can explain exactly what is going to happen to your country. That is one of the things I want to do. 
So I'm going to stop there. It is time for a break, and you're probably bored to death with me anyway. Um, I'm going to stop there. Thank you so much for being so kind, and we will continue after your break. Thank you. Thank you.